techniques for open invariance in neural circuits. Thank you. Okay, so uh, if you're doing relative grammar width in theory, a natural question you might ask is this. Assume you have a divisor, a smooth divisor D, inside some smooth variety X, and you're interested in counting things like this that have, uh, you want to count curves with tangency conditions on D. Uh, this is a more difficult question to answer than it sounds like because uh, you may run into several transversality issues that you need to do some bubbling off and change your target. And um, I would like to propose this question in a way that you can treat it without uh, modifying your target and also in a way that uh, you are not considering only smooth divisors, but divisors that allow normal crossing singularities, like if you take the anticanonical divisor and CP2. And then what you want to do is, uh, you want to do log Ramovitz in theory, a theory developed by Gross-Siebert and Abramov separately. Um, okay? Sorry, no problem. Uh, that looks better. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Not much difference. Is it fine? Okay. Okay, so log Gromovitan theory is a generalized version of relative Gromovitan theory uh, where you can also consider not only smooth divisors but the ones with normal crossing singularities. And um, you're encoding the contact orders with some structure called the log structure. So you end up your, both your domain and your target with a structure called a log structure. And this uh, determines the contact orders. And in standard log Gramovitan theory, these turn out to be always positive, but a recent insight is if you want to study the generating holomorphic curves with boundaries, then you need to allow some more generalized theory and allow negative contact orders. And thus, this group of all these four people came together and they for are writing a paper now called Punctured Log Gramovitan Invariance which should appear soon, and these are the more generalized versions of relative Gromovitan invariants that are interesting for symplectic cohomology as well as some mirror constructions. Okay, let me start by telling you what a log structure is. So if you have a divisor that you want to construct, I'll just give an example of a basic log structure, not the general definition. Take a sheaf of monoids on your scheme X, and you want to add it to the data uh, of a map to your structure sheaf so that this map will restrict an isomorphism once you look at the invertible elements of your structure sheaf. And if you look at the uh, sheaf of regular functions that have zeros on your device, the D, this gives a standard log structure and you just look at inclusion. Uh, for instance, if you consider A2 with divisor xy equal to zero, by definition of the log structure, there is always a copy of the invertible elements of the structure sheaf, uh, which is not terribly useful, so you often get rid of it for computational purposes. You call the ghost sheaf after quotienting out this copy. So if you look at the stocks of your sheaf of monoids, the regular functions that are zeros, uh, and D will have stocks around these points, they're of the form x to A around these points, they're of the form y to B around these points, x to A, y to B. And you can identify these with natural numbers by identifying them with the powers similar to the log function. So that's the motivation for log structure. Okay, and how do log Gromovitan appear invariants appear in mirror symmetry? Uh, the construction of mirrors suggested by Gross and Siebert is that whenever you have something, say, Calabi-Yau, you put it into a degeneration, uh, and they're considering special degenerations called toric degenerations, and the aim is to construct a mirror degenerating family. A toric degeneration is this. It's a degeneration. The general fiber is the thing you're interested in studying, say, the calabi -Yau, You want to construct its mirror. And the central fiber is a union of toric varieties glued along toric strata. For instance, you can consider the generation of K3 surfaces given like this, and the central fiber will be a copy of unions of four, four copies of CP2 glued along CP1. And the nice thing about these degenerations is uh, you can uh, associate to the central fiber an integral of one manifold with singularities. In this case, it's the tetrahedron. 
and the uh, integral of one manifold admits 24 singular points as its singular structure. So you can cover it with charts, the transition functions in GLN Z, some other products Z2, uh, away from these 24 singular points. And the singular structure is determined by the log structure. So what you do is you endow the total space of your degeneration with log structure, the divisorial log structure I was talking about. You take your central fiber X0 as a device inside the total space, and then you pull back the log structure to X0. And then the log structure turns out to be a nice log structure where you can find charts for it away from a singular locus, and the singular locus of the log structure fibers over the singular locus of the singular affine structure. And that's how you use log geometry to determine this uh, integral affine manifold plus some combinatorial data. Then what you do is you run the cross Ebert algorithm. You first construct from this integral affine manifold B, B check a dual integral affine manifold with some dual combinatorial data. Uh, you apply a procedure called discrete Legendre dual, and then you do some scattering algorithm on this integral dual integral affine manifold. It's similar to a conservative Seidelman algorithm, a uh, pretty complicated algorithm that's used to construct the coordinate ring of the Mera family. That's essentially the gross ebert reconstruction theorem and their annals paper. And it turns out that uh, the scattering functions appearing in this algorithm have some nice enumerative interpretation in terms of some punctured logram of its invariants. So the coefficients appearing in these scattering algorithms give some punctured logram of its invariants. That's how they appear in this mirror construction. And there is an alternative mirror construction uh, proposed by homological mirror symmetry, which I will now talk too much about. It roughly uh, proposes that if you have some non-compact clavia, you can construct a ring called the symplectic homology ring, which gives some clear theoretic invariance, and take the proj of this ring to construct your mirror. There are a lot of people doing symplectic homology, the inventors, Paul Zadl, and many other people, Mohammed Abu Zaid, there are many people who know a lot more uh, very well about it, so I'm not going to talk much. And the, the main dream what we had is uh, we wanted to provide an algebraic geometric approach to the symplectic homology ring in terms of punctured log with an invariance. Um, and uh, we took some steps with the Tate curve. We tried to do it for the Tate curve, and the main technique uses a lot of tropical geometry. And this was the main uh, question in my thesis that I finished under the supervision of Bernd Siebert last month. And this question was proposed by Mohammed Abu Zaid and Bernd Siebert to me. Okay, so what's the Tate curve? The Tate curve is a degeneration of elliptic curves, and the central fiber is a chain of P1s you construct it torquely. You start with an integral of one manifold B, which is R in this case. The polyhedral decomposition is given by Z. You add these rays, and this defines the fan for the total space of a degeneration. There's a Z action on this fan, which induces an action on the total space. You take the quotient, and gives, this gives you the total space of the Tate curve which uh, has general fiber elliptic curve and central fiber chain of P1s. And we want to understand the symplectic homology of the Tate curve minus the central fiber in terms of some punctured logram with an invariance. And our approach towards it was to, we first want to start with the Foucault category of the elliptic curve. And when I say here Foucault category, I mean Lagrangian Fleur theory. Okay, so there's a category called the tropical Mars category introduced by Abu Zaid, Gross, and Seabat. And we use this category to study the Foucault category of the elliptic curve. This is a nice category. You can relate it both to the Foucault category and the category of coherent sheaves, the right bounded coherent sheaves. And the structure coefficients in this category are given by tropical Mars trees, which are just maps from a ribbon graph R to your integral affine manifold B. Uh, in our case, for the elliptic curve, it's an S1. The objects in this category is integers. You just put integers on regions that your ribbon graph separates. And then you endow each uh, edge of your ribbon graph with some integer by taking the differences of these integers. And then you put some assumptions ensuring balancing conditions on these vertices and some further assumptions. And then what we do is uh, we wanted to define a uh, count for these tropical Mars trees that determine the infant structure on the elliptic curve. For the elliptic curve, the infant structure is worked out using these tropical Mars trees by Mark Gross 
and the clear book. Uh, what we do is we lift these, uh, the images of these, you get some, uh, uh, an S1, you get some uh, things, and we lift these to the upper half plane along radial directions, these images of these tropical Mars trees. And then we obtain all these things, radial directions, and then we patch these together, looking at some balancing conditions, the balancing conditions solves due to some balancing conditions there. And then we obtain objects like this. They essentially are patched together by lifting tropical Mars trees to the truncated cone. This is at height 1r, and they live over the upper half plane over height 1. And these look like tropical curves, very similar to tropical curves, except that they are truncated. And if you extend them, they will all pass through the origin. They have positive and negative ends. And we define some counting problem for these objects. And then what I do in my thesis is uh, to find the corresponding punctured locromo witten invariance to these objects and show that the counts equal. To define the corresponding punctured locromo witten invariance, I take this upper truncated cone, which are tropical coral slew, I put it at height 1, I take the cone of it, similar to the Tate curve construction, except this time instead of starting with R, I start with the truncated cone, and this gives the degeneration of the Tate curve by construction. If you apply the same method, you obtain a variety whose central fiber is a chain of P1 times A1, and general fiber is the Tate curve itself. Okay, and then what you show is you apply some tropical geometric techniques and define some log corals in, in, in the to look at some stable range. And uh, hence, um, we have some punctured locromo within invariance. These low corals actually admit some unbounded components, but those unbounded components turn out uh, nicely behaving and they can be replaced by some punctures. And at the end, what we arrive at is uh, we interpret the Foucault category of the general fiber of the Tate curve going over tropical Mars trees and tropical corals in terms of some punctured log maps uh, of the central fiber. And what we propose is you can not only define the Foucault category of the general fiber, uh, you can actually, by applying some suitable deformation theory of these log corals, determine the higher structures on symplectic homology of the total space of the Tate curve, which is not very easy to determine because it doesn't have a contact type boundary, but Mark McLean discussions of him, it follows that it's determined as the uh, third homology of the mapping torus phi, phi to i, an infinite sum, and uh, we can already uh, associate a basis to the symplectic homology ring to the one over n valued integer points of our integral fine manifold B, uh, which determines the basis for the coordinate ring cross e constructs. But what we propose is really something more interesting. We claim that there are these ring structures can be determined, this A-infinity structure can be determined in terms of these um, locales. And this is further work to study. Okay, I'd just like to finish by saying that the use of log geometry is not restricted to this approach to symplectic cohomology. There are two papers joined with Van Siebert, which will come out soon. We, on one paper, we studied Katonakama spaces, uh, which you use to determine the topology of the general fiber uh, in terms of the log structure, and we, used, uh, we introduced real log schemes, so we carried these punctured log Locromo written invariance along with real structures. And an another paper we studied uh, what happens if you, uh, how can you relate different scattering constructions when you move around to singularity, singular points of the integral affine structure. And actually, uh, this one and what I was talking about, I will put my thesis onto my webpage by next week or so, the expanded versions you can see. So, thank you. Thank you.